invitations. Welcome back to another video. We are going to talk about something that you might encounter in schools and it basically has to do with what I raged about in the last video with the mixed fractions. We are going to talk about proper and improper fractions today, what their connection is or what they dif differ in basically, so what's the difference between those two and also what the connection to mixed fractions actually is. So we are going to dive right in and we are going to talk about the proper fractions at first. Proper fractions are fractions of the form, for example, one quarter, I don't care, or three fifths, or for example, um, seven nineteenths. So you might notice something here. A proper fraction is defined as a fraction where the numerator is less than our denominator. I hope you agree with me that four is greater than one, that five is greater than three, that 19 is greater than seven. So this is the main property of a proper fraction, namely that the uh, um, denominator, denominator is strictly greater than our numerator. This is the only thing you really need to know. And there's one thing that you can also remember that holds for proper fractions, namely that proper fractions are kind of between zero and one, or if the sign right here is negative, then it's between negative one and zero. Just as an example, one quarter is nothing but 0 0.25 as the decimal expansion. It's between zero and one. Three fifths is 0 0.6, it's between zero and one. Seven nineteenths is something less than a half, okay? It's between zero and one. I hope I get the point across basically. This is something that you can also remember. So, so if you know the decimal expansion for some proper fraction, then you also know that it's a proper fraction if it's bounded between negative one and one basically, depending on your sign. Okay, what about improper fractions? Improper fractions. They have the property that they are basically the polar opposite of what we have here. Namely, a proper um, an improper fraction could be 5 over 3. It could be um, 19 over 7. It could be 13 over 4. Those are all improper fractions. What is the difference here? The, the key difference between improper and proper fractions? Well, our numerator in this case is always strictly greater than our denominator. So it's basically just this order relation switched around. Numerator is greater than our denominator. I hope you can see this. 5 is greater than 3, 19 is greater than 7, 13 is greater than 4. And here's one thing. If we have um, 5 over 3, you can also argue the same way as we did before for improper frac uh, for proper fractions. <laughs> Sorry. We had that um, our decimal expansion was between negative 1 and 1 in some way was something like 0 0.25. But for our improper fractions, we have that 5 over 3 is a bit more than 1 in some way. It's between 1 and 2 in some way. So 5 over 3 is nearly 2. 19 over 7 is nearly 3. And 13 over 4 is um, 3 dot. Two, five. So you see they are always bigger than one or if we have a negative sign they are always less than negative one in some way. This is how you can use the decimal expansion to actually um, yeah, get a hold of those improper fractions. Now there's a connection between improper fractions and mixed fractions. I kind of um, spoiled it before. If we take a look at 13 over 4, you might ask yourself the question, how often does the 4 fit into the 13? Okay, so 13 over 4 is basically, okay, 4 fits 3 times into 13. 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. So this is 3 whole cakes basically plus, well, 1 quarter of a cake left. That's a mixed fraction, all right? Three whole and one quarter we are going to have here. And rewriting the impro um, and rewriting the mixed fraction basically, um, we can say that this is three plus one quarter, just to remember what this notation actually means. We can do it for another example, for example, 19 over seven. If we have 19 over seven, seven fits exactly two times into 19, okay, it's going to give us 14. So this is going to give us, um, two whole cakes and how much is left after we placed our seven into the 19? Well, five is going to be left. So this is five over seven in this case. And you can rewrite it yet again, this mixed fraction as two plus 
5 over 7. So this is the connection basically. For improper fractions we have that we can always express an improper fraction using mixed fractions in some way. This is the core difference between proper fractions and improper fractions. They can be turned into mixed fractions. They can because they are between 0 and 1 or 0 and negative 1 in some way. Now I would enjoy this video if you just have to subscribe my comment channel like if you know about someone who needs math help in some way or just a refresher for basic mathematics feel free to recommend them this channel. Also if you know about a teacher who would like to um, bring mathematics to their students without um, having them in their classroom so like um, online learning then yeah recommend this channel to your, to your teacher maybe he finds this channel cool and other than that thank you guys for watching take a look at the main channel and I'm until next week, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao!